We really enjoy our new, well, new to us, Hyundai car, and it's much newer than our last vehicle purchase, so it has all the modern bells and whistles. One of these is an included remote key. My partner always likes to have backups of backups, so we requested a third set of keys. Unfortunately, for some reason, only two keys can be programmed into the car, so we have been very uncomfortable with accidentally locking the keys inside the car, especially if I'm rushing to get a lift up a mountain to fly off. Yet get forgetful. This project just gives us something to fall back on. It's an emergency unlocking mechanism that uses a vibration sensor to enter a code and unlock the doors without a key. A multiple digit code tapped on the door will unlock the car. This can be any number of digits, but I decided to keep it at three digits. The program was easy enough, but required some testing and a special sleep routine, which will stop batteries from getting drawn down. After a minute, the processor goes to sleep, only consuming a couple of milliamps on average, or about the equivalent of a flashing LED. Because of this sleep mode, a number of taps must occur to wake it up before entering the code, which is hard-coded in. I, of course, changed the combination after this video. As you can see in the schematics, it's pretty simple. The piezo inputs directly into the ADC0. I didn't bother with an amp, as it certainly didn't need it. Once the combination is valid, the output to the transistor turns on the relay for a quarter second, which switches the unlock. The relay isolates the car's BCM module, so no issues can occur. The program will reset for each digit of the combination after one second, and those digits are loaded to an array. That array is checked after three second period of no more input, and if it matches, unlocks the doors. There's absolutely no way this could occur by accident. Well, maybe a 0.000000001% chance, very unlikely. About the same as a safe opening from an earthquake dialing in the exact combination. <laughs> The header pins can be wired different ways, as I wasn't certain what voltages the unlock switch would be using at the time. Last ditch, a power wire could be run, which is what it ended up requiring. I 3D printed up an ice case to hold an Arduino Pro Mini and a small PCB with the relay and minimal circuitry. The PCB also mounts the 16-pin box header connector, so it can be removed easily. Unfortunately, I forgot to get a picture of inside the box, but here it is ready to go in. Time to install this puppy. The door panel came off pretty easily after I watched a couple of YouTube videos. Underneath is the dust shield stuck on with Permatex. Thankfully it's hot today so it'll come off easily. The speaker is riveted in place so plan A isn't going to work. There's an access through the side impact sensor hole so the module will be shoved in through there and sit in the bottom of the door. The flexible wire conduit goes into a socket, unlike the old way of just feeding under the dash, so it can't be used. The solution is to pierce a tiny hole in the bottom of the rubber flex thing, and then run the wire out and back in through a conveniently placed rubber plug. And there it is. Here's the handy rubber plug drilled out to become a grommet. 
Care must be taken with running these wires back and down because the window rolls down this track. So which pins to connect to the relay? The diagram shows unlock is on pins 5 and 12, so I'll short them to test. Hope it's not the airbag. Yep, those are the ones. And one more time, just for fun. I like to strip off a slice without actually cutting the wires, then twist and solder them. That way the position and length isn't changed. So the yellow wires from the relay attach to these wires. I tested the black wire and it is indeed a ground. The whole door frame is not grounded, but it might be when the door is closed. And solder those. The window is rolled down to make sure nothing interferes with it. The wires will run along the hole, held in place with Gorilla Tape. And my module will sit down in the back corner of the door. It will be wrapped in foam packing so it sits tight, but can be removed without too much trouble. I had to slit the dust shield for the wires. Oh well, Gorilla Tape will hold it. Wrapping it in foam seems the best way to keep it in place. Piezo, which I made a nice case for, and glued the center to a disc in the middle, turned out to be very sensitive. I planned to mount it on the outer skin of the door, and thought I was. The outer skin of the door isn't really accessible, it seems. So the inner skin acts like a big resonant steel drum. This did not work as it confused the processor. Good thing the goop glue hadn't hardened yet. The next thing to try was to mount it to a more solid frame that wouldn't ring. This seems to work fine. So apply a little bit of glue and the tape will hold it in place until it hardens. With the computer hooked up and temporary power, we can see that it does in fact work. But with very light taps. So last, the power needs to be hooked up properly in the fuse panel. I tried this, but fuses are no longer solderable, which was a surprise. It was just soldered to the plastic. So I ended up making a brass clip with an inline glass fuse. Now for the big test. Locked. Tapping multiple times to start wakes up the processor for one minute. I found that just tapping on the door handle really lightly works well. I hope this gives you some ideas on what to do about this situation. <laughs> Works. Thanks for watching.